Hello there, and welcome to another video from Change Tips and Tools. Now, last year I released a video on how to get your file name and sheet name in a single formula. And the link to that video can be found in the description. Now, a couple of days ago, Slamania, I hope I pronounced that, forgive me if I've mispronounced it, left me this comment. Which fundamentally means it didn't work for them. So let's solve this with a different approach. Let's do this. So here I have um, an Excel spreadsheet and you can see here, just to replicate um, Slamania is problem with the square bracket in there. So I've put that in there in the tool so you can see that there. And I've also saved this as an XLSM or a macro enabled um, file, Excel file. Now don't worry, we're not writing any macros here, but we need to do this to be able to use the get workbook function. Now, the get workbook function in Excel returns information about a workbook, such as the names of all the sheets in a workbook, which is perfect because that's what we want here. And it's part of a set of commands known as the Excel 4.0 macros or Excel M macros. Um, and this is can be used in all versions of Excel. So hopefully this will be perfect for Slomena. So let's talk about the get workbook function and give you um, an example of how this works. So as I say, you, well, no, I didn't actually say this, but you can't enter it as a form. So if I do get dot workbook, you can see you're not getting any prompts here. And if I just put that in there, like so, as a formula, it'll just give me an LA saying it's not a valid function. But the way that we use this is we use it in a named range. So if I take this and do control X and hit return, um, and I go to formulas and define a name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this list. Uh, let's do list workbook. Just as a, as a name range. And then I'm going to paste that formula into there like so. And do OK. And it accepts it. So now if I... If I do equals and I do list, you'll see there's list workbook. And what it's going to do, it's going to spill it out horizontally. Now, I don't want that, so I'm going to wrap this. Yeah. I'm going to wrap it in the transpose function for now. Now, obviously, in earlier versions of Excel, um, you won't be able to use the transpose or any of the spill um, arrays, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. But if I choose transpose, just to show you how this outputs here. There you go. Now you can see what it's doing with um, the Excel file and how it treats these square brackets. And it'll treat those square brackets in a kind of file path. And there you can see the sheet names. Now we want to just get the sheet name here. Now let's just talk about Again, how we use the get workbook function to get the sheet name and then create a new name right from that. Well, let's talk through the structure of the formula. And the formula, we're going to use replace. So the replace function. So obviously the replace function replaces um, identified test that you, you identify. So we I do that. So the old text that we want to replace or work with is going to be the get dot workbook and that parameter that we're using in there in the, the workbook which is we're using one and that returns the sheet name so that's what we want in those brackets so i'm going to do in brackets so that's the text that we that we want 
We then need to say, where do we start in that text range? Which is gonna be the very beginning, which is one. And then the number of characters that we're gonna use, we're gonna use the find function to find uh, where this is. So if I do find, and again, I'm gonna find the square bracket here. Yeah. And I'm going to put that in quotation marks. That's the text that I'm looking for. And again, it's within the get dot workbook. Again, do because I'm using I want to return the sheet. So that's what I'm returning. And that is what I'm finding. So then I close the bracket on the, the find. Then what I want to replace it with is I want it blank. I want to remove the rest. I just want the sheet name. So I'm just going to do quotation marks there for blank. And I'm going to close the bracket on the replace. Now, the only problem with this is you would have to keep dragging it down and rewriting the formula each time um, you, your data changes in your spreadsheet. And obviously, we want this to be dynamic. And the way that we're going to use that is we're going to use what we call volatile functions within Excel. So for example, the random function is a, volatile, is a volatile function, which means each time you recalculate or your spreadsheet recalculates your workbook, then volatile functions will, will, will recalculate. So we're gonna use the now function, which shows the current system time. And that recalculates each time your spreadsheet recalculates. So I'm going to add that onto the end of there. I'm going to do and and this will force this then to recalculate. And I'm going to use the T function, and you can see that checks whether a value is text and returns the text if it's true or returns a blank fundamentally, double quotes, which is a blank. So because the now is a time, it's always going to return a blank. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to hit return on that because we'll get another error. It won't like it. But what I'm done going to do is I'm going to select that. I'm going to control copy and then I'm going to escape. And let's go back to the def on the formulas, define name. And I'm going to call this list tabs as my. Like so. And again, I'm just going to paste that form we just created into refers to I'm going to do control V and I'm going to click OK. So now again what I'm going to do because this is an Excel version so I'm going to do the same formula here. So I'm going to do equals transpose open bracket then I'm going to do list so it's list tabs remember And I'm just going to close the bracket on the transpose and do return. And there you go. It's now listing all our sheet names, including the support sheet name. Perfect. But how do we do the same thing here with earlier versions of Excel? So I think that's probably 2019 prior to that. I'll we will use the index function to do that. So the way that we would do that is we could do index. So remember, this is an array. So that list tabs is an array. So if I do index and I go, right. Um, so the array is going to be that list tabs, like so. The row number is we're going to use the row function. Because again, I want to make this dynamic so we can just copy it down. So if I do row, and then I'm going to choose uh, A1 here and close the bracket on that, it'll return the row reference of cell A1, which will be row 1. So it'll return the first record in this first record in this list tabs array, if that makes sense. Yeah. And then if I close the bracket, on that and hit return, I then get the support sheet in the same way. And if I drag that down, so let's put it down to 21, you can see I'm getting this error because obviously there's no more sheets. 
to the way to solve that if I then go into here and do if error and if it's an error I'm just going to return a blank cell with the double quotation marks and hit return then if I copy that all the way down to 21 there you go now I don't want the support sheet in there because I'll probably keep this as a support sheet and I'd use it in my dashboard so what I'll do for any for Office 365 versions is I would probably just use the filter function to say right if I take that there and control copy it and do filter so I'm going to filter that output I'm going to do where it does not equal in quotation marks should because it's text support sheet and then I'll just close the bracket on that and hit return and there you go the support sheet's done and it's listening in the order of the sheets here perfect how do I do it with this one well it's simple I just start the actual row reference from A2 so we're always starting from row two so it always skips the first one which is the support sheet and just copy that back down to 21 boom so how do we use this information to dynamically get totals well this is where the indirect function becomes really useful because if you remember in other videos the indirect function um, translates text to a range so if we think about that so if i do because i want to be able to go equal sum and i want to be able to go to um so let's go to the first sheet so i've got a number of sheets here where i've got the sales on each tab so i've got january february march and so on those sales and i've got these tables here so if i want to know a sum of the profit if i select h here and then close the bracket here so you, you can see it's got the sheet name there and then h if i hit return there we go let's make these um, all uh, currency so on the home ribbon just change that to currency and because i'm in the uk it'll pick up from my system my local regional settings which is pounds so how do i get that then to dynamically use this so i can then get the totals from feb march april and so on as I say, this is where the indirect function comes in. So I need to replace this with the indirect function. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to type indirect tab. So my text reference, so I'm going to do open quotation marks. And after this apostrophe here, I'm just going to select after that, do a quotation mark, and then I'm going to do the ampersand. Yeah, and I'm going to select this cell here. I'm then going to do and again the ampersand. I'm going to delete that January 23. And again, I'm going to put a quotation mark in front of that apostrophe, and I'm going to do a quotation mark after the range there. And I'm going to hit and close the bracket on the indirect function and then hit return and there you go and again if I drag this down all the way down to 21 and I get this reference error here because it can't find those sheets so all I've got to do is then just put an if function in here and just do if this cell does not equal blank and do the sum otherwise leave it blank and close the bracket on that and again if I copy that down to 21 boom so let's try and add another sheet and let's see if this dynamically picks it up now remember it's dynamically so if I if I go into here say for example at the end and I just add another sheet you'll notice it's not added anything it needs to recalculate so if I 
added another row or did a calculation or changed some data, it would then recalculate. So if I move this to there, it would then recalculate. So if I go to here, support sheet, you can see it's now added sheet one. Yeah. And if I right click on it and I delete that sheet, again, go to the support sheet, it's recalculated or you can press F9 to recalculate. So let's add, so I've got another spreadsheet open, which all these sheets will be the support files. Uh, again, a link in the direction so you can follow along. Probably should have said that at the start. Um, but um, if I go to the other Excel file here, where I've got December sales, I right click on that and do move and copy I'm going to create a copy of it and I'm going to move it to this file that we've got open and I'm going to put it at the end yeah and do okay it's there if I go to the support sheet you can see because it's changed the sheets recalculated it's added it and it's automatically added that calculation at the bottom for that sheet. So that's how I would overcome your problem for Mayna. Um, hopefully that's helped and been informative. And if, uh, if anybody has got any more queries or questions or want, wants help, then please post them in the comments or send me messages and I'll try and answer those uh, in videos in the future. And if you like this video, please support the channel by clicking like subscribe and smash that notifications button for future content and as always i wish you an absolutely wonderful day wherever you are in the world please take care and i look forward to seeing you in the next video for change tips and tools bye bye now